Trey Lance. Let's first talk about how he affects the run game. Uh, to me, this is one of the biggest reasons I like the pick and why I thought he should have been playing earlier. No matter what you say about his readiness in the past game, it's a run first offense and just his presence on the field under center shotgun, whatever is going to make everyone more efficient. Every running back more. That's the way I saw it. What do you think? Earlier in the season, when we were kind of on the, the, the Trey Lance bandwagon, we wanted to bring him in earlier so we wouldn't be in this discussion right now. <clears throat> One of the first things we said is it's not the runs he will get. It's keeping the defense honest. Someone yes. has to account for him at all times. Niners fans, you will all remember the Kaepernick days and how they had to assign a linebacker that would have to shadow him. Yeah. That opens up not just the run game, but the short pass game as well. This yeah. West Coast style offense. It opens up George yeah. Kittle, Kyle Juszczyk, et cetera. But in the run game specifically, the just the mere threat of the read option, or as he's handing the ball off, as a, as a, as a an average defensive player, you're gonna have to to literally make sure who has the ball before you break. Yeah, and it's something that Lamar Jackson brings to the Ravens, and I got to see that in the Rams game when they tackled the quarterback after he handled the ball off, and that was Huntley, same kind of quarterback as Trey Lance. Those things draw defense. And that's just one less guy that Kyle Juszczyk has to block so he can get to the second <clears> level and completely beast, as he always does, a safety. And if you're in the second level and Kyle Juszczyk is still with you, that's a touchdown. Yep. These are the things that, first off, even if Kyle Juszczyk got to the second level with Jimmy Garoppolo with his six-mile-an-hour run, he would never get there. That's yep. the thing with Lance <clears> is that he can, he can stick to this run, this run game in a way that Jimmy can't, can't even participate in. So it allows Kyle Shanahan to, to, to protect Elijah Mitchell Kyle Juszczyk, Trey Lance, everyone is, is this moving piece that all the defensive players have to account for. They're, and it's one of those things where they might account for it eight out of ten times. But it's those two or three times in a game when the running back or the quarterback gets to the second level. That's what we will see as, as things develop with Lance. So the run game is absolutely, it's masked, it has more stealth, uh, it's, it's, it's got more potency now, and Lance is a great runner. He is not Debo Samuel in the back, the backfield, but I get the feeling that if we turn him loose properly, he would be like Debo 2.0. I think it's interesting that the 49ers haven't really gotten Lance going as a runner yet. He, they will. They'll figure right. it out because exactly. he's very gifted. They haven't gotten the zone read going yet. They will. They have Debo Samuel and Trey Lance. They'll figure it out. But what they got going in this game was the under center eye formation run game with Elijah Mitchell. And I know Elijah Mitchell's had good games this year. But to me, you can't quantify it, but I thought that there was an impact having Trey Lance do the, the handoffs as opposed to Jimmy. Because when it's a stretch handoff to the right, you know what I'm saying? Outside zone to the to the right. When Lance hands it off, he sprints the hell out of there to the left, whether he has the ball or not. And the defense looks. When Jimmy sprints out, no one cares. They know he's not keeping exactly. the ball. He's not a threat. But when Lance does, I mean... Exactly. Those are the, those are the home runs. Those are that's that's how we hit Debo for the touchdown, the, the rollout to the right. So just having him do that is gonna give Elijah Mitchell a couple extra yards every play. I think it's a, and that's just one facet. You're gonna see the shotgun run game become more potent when the Niners figure that out with Trey Lance and all kind of stuff. So yeah, I see an effect. And also like in a. A byproduct of affecting the run game affects the pass game. You mentioned that that touchdown pass to Debo Samuel. It gives a one-on-one -on -one matchup because of the threat of the rollout. So they're almost expecting, not expecting a run. It's it, They just have to be honest. It's like pick your poison. And yeah. they're going to have to to trust in their man coverage. Basically yeah. because they're going to have to assign someone up close to the line of scrimmage or on the outside, the perimeter, to account for Trey Lance. So that draws a defender down into the box. If they don't bring that defender down, take off. But if they do, you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And one thing I like about Lance over Garoppolo is he takes those shots with That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. And like power. He has the fact that he can go over the top him. of the defense also uh, helps the run game. Because if you watch, defenses are so compacted around the Niners' offense. When Jimmy Garoppolo's, it, when Trey Lance, either, either one, because they feel your offense is running the ball and throwing short passes. And so we're just going to hang out right here. And now you have a guy who can burn you for 50 yard touchdowns over the top. What do you do? That helps the run. You back off. So that helps the run game too. Do you see how happy Debo Samuel was after that touchdown? He never, he never goes up to Garoppolo like that. I know that he just went up to him and says, Hey, I just want to thank, 
Thank you for existing, for being drafted. You are what I've been waiting for. Thanks if you, for if making you know, me look good. If you realize, Lance has played two and a half games, right? Two and a half. And he's thrown in those, what? That's 10 quarters. He's thrown two long touchdown passes to Debo Samuel, two. One, one against Seattle, one this one. So, yeah, I think, I think what you're going to see is Debo Samuel, Trey Lance unlock an entirely different part of Debo Samuel's game. Debo Samuel's a running back with Jimmy Garoppolo. With Trey Lance, you're going to see him average like 25 yards a catch. It's going to be way different. Way different. Exactly. Probably extend his career. Probably extend his career. Sean says he improves the run and the pass game. All those rollout pass plays, the linebackers look completely lost trying to decide whether to get to the line or drop back in coverage. Yup. Yup. It's nice to see play action come back to the offense. I'm a big fan of play action. It's going to take someone like Bobby Wagner to, to read it correctly most of the time. But the point is, they only need two or three home run plays a game. Elijah Mitchell will spell the rest of the time of possession for them. And the one more thing, the other thing that I love about Trey Lance and why I thought he was the right pick and why I preferred him to guys like Justin Fields is look at how natural and comfortable he is under center. And I know you want a dual threat quarterback in the gun, in a spread offense, so you can utilize his legs and do the zone read. But Play action is best from under center. That's where you get your real explosive plays when you put the quarterback under center, have him turn his back, and uh, you don't get those plays in the spread offense. You get them in the in the eye formation, and Trey Lance is so good at it. Now, the pick did come on, on uh, play action, but – I'm just saying all his big plays did too. That interception yeah. is just a boneheaded play. It's not yeah. that, he, that he lacks the like skill the or the talent yeah. or anything. It's just, it's it's one of those things where like, look at the, it's not if open. I'm Kyle Shannon, it's like, look at the replay. You see him? I did. And he's like, okay, yeah. okay, cool. But what also I would say if I were Kyle Shannon, is look, um, I think that play's a little played out. I think people are kind of caught on to that. Look, I called it. It wasn't open in the future. Don't throw that. But in the future, I may back off that play for a little while because it didn't, it's not fooling anyone anymore. Remember three years ago? People were like, oh, my God, it was no one's covering Kittle. Now everyone, I mean, I think people, if you're preparing for the Niners, you have to be prepared for why. Isn't that have the to. same play that was called in the Saints game where, where they face mass Kittle? Isn't that the same route? No, I think this one is sort of like, no, that was just Kittle in the flat, if I remember correctly. But this is, they do it a that's lot right, with. They, uh, that's right, because that was designed to pick yeah. up a fourth and five or seven or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. It's like he looks like he's blocking. He comes across formation, then all of a sudden he, he turns up field, and it's a, an, an opportunity for an explosive play because he's not right. being guarded. But it's a short throw. It's a short throw. Lance makes long throws. Jimmy makes short throws. So those, those are one of those like no, that's one big thing. Shot plays for Jimmy. The shot clock, if you will, if you look at him holding onto the ball, um, the amount of seconds he's holding onto it, if you look at it on paper, would not work against the Rams' pass rush. However, he extends the plays with his right. legs. So I think right. it's important to realize that. The quick release is not part of his game. Um, I would like to see it get added. Like he has the potential and I've seen him do it, but he does like to improvise and he does like to roll. And I do like that because he drags defense with him and he allows his guys to get uncovered. But he does have the ability. Remember the the, the quick throw to, to Debo at the end of the first half that Debo took for yes. about 20 yards? He can do yeah, it. That's why I say he does have the ability, he but does. he does like to hold the ball. I will be very interested to see how Aaron Donald and Von Miller react to that. Agree. Now, I don't think Aaron Donald is going to be as big a factor in this game. He was a zero factor in the in the Ravens game. I watched zero. He did nothing in that game. <laughs>